Compton. Good morning, Chair Boschko and our Honorable Coastal Commissioners. My name is Lynn Compton and I am the Local County Supervisor for District 4, which includes the ODSVRA area that we're all here today to discuss. So this issue is important to my district and to the local people, the local businesses, the local economy, and our county as a whole. Hence, I'm here to address your commission. Additionally, today I speak for two other super board, supervisors on the board, John Pashong and Debbie Arnold, who have both submitted letters before you. I'd like to tell you a little bit about my district, my constituents, and myself, and why I'm here. I'm very proud to represent this district and to live in the Pomo. This district is very diverse, but mostly comprised of hardworking individuals in homes where both parents work in order to afford to live here. Many work in the visitor services industries as tourism is one of our main income generators. Certain parts of my community are classified as disadvantaged communities due to the demographics and economics, a fact that is more the rule than the exception. No doubt we have multi-million dollar retirement communities in this district, but that is not the norm. Most of the people who live here can't afford to stay in one of the many lovely hotels that we do have in this area where a one night stay will run you two to three hundred dollars a night. I reject the notion that many people put forward that people who advocate for keeping the park open aren't or are for riding don't care about the health of others. I personally have a daughter with asthma. When she was a toddler, we adopted a dog that had respiratory disease where the cilia in his throat didn't beat in unison, so he also had breathing problems. For many years every morning, I sat both of them on my kitchen counter while I administered albuterol treatments to both of them so they could both breathe. We dealt with it. If I thought I lived here in a community that compromised your health, I would move. This team now just graduated from high school this past June and has so many fond memories of the dunes over the years with her friends. There have been camping trips there, barbecues, campfires, and so many family and teen events there that the memories she will carry forward with her are etched in her mind for a lifetime, just like all of the others that recreate here. These parks belong to the people, something that often gets overlooked in my opinion. I truly believe recreating at the dunes and healthy living in this area aren't mutually exclusive uh, issues. I also don't believe that should the dunes be closed down to riding or the riding area be reduced, that miraculously will have perfect air days to breathe in the Pomo. That's just not the case. We live in a windy area on top of a moving sand dune. The entire Napomo Mesa was built on sand way before riding on the dunes happened. I do believe that with cooperation and compromise both sides of this, on both sides of this issue, things can be accomplished for the greater benefit and the greater good of all involved on both sides. But this takes a willingness to cooperate. Today you have many local officials who have weighed in on this issue. The mayor of Pismo Beach, you just heard Grover Beach, Arroyo Grandi, the elected president of the Oceano Community Service District have all provided their thoughts and letters to assemblymen and higher elected officials. There is no doubt our local businesses will be affected by your decision. One in particular, one of the largest employers in Arroyo Grande with over 65 employees has indicated they will relocate to another state should this happen. This was not a threat. They stopped the permit process right before paying a $250,000 uh, fee. I know your decisions are not based on economic considerations, but it could quite possibly change the character of our economy and community forever. Our county is dependent on tourism and the economy. The economic impact of losing this recreational area would no doubt hurt the economy. It appears the staff report was drafted without input from our local citizens, many of whom are here today. Many will be adversely affected by your decision should you choose to agree. Um, in my opinion, we should have been able to give input before the staff report came out. I realize I'm at the end of my time. No one's ex suggesting the status quo. We will work on this, but please, there's a process in place and a plan designed with local experts on both sides to move forward. Thank you.